Hey guys, uh, welcome to Nonsonic. I picked up uh, through a trade uh, a System 1 keyboard. I actually traded it for my DJ808, well, and along with cash as well. It wasn't a bad deal, um, but the trader actually said that this was in mint condition and it was all working properly, etc. etc. Turned out that it's actually not. Um, as you can see right here, there's, well, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a gouge on the side here, which is really not a big deal. But um, anyways, what I had noticed was, as you can see, I mean most of the keys work pretty good, but this one here it's a little a little faulty. It wasn't working when I first got it, but I managed to push a lot more up in this area here, and it does seem to work better. This one doesn't work at all, really, um, unless you push up here, and it's kind of stuck. And I think it's this key here, yeah, also have a problem. This one doesn't work at all. I can't get it to go. So what I'm going to try to do... Sorry. <laughs> Everything... I keep playing the keys. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to first get some... Well, I picked up some uh, can of air here. I'm going to see if that's going to make a difference. And then, if not, I'm going to actually take it apart and see if I can clean out the rubber contacts underneath. I did watch, like I did actually watch another video of someone um, taking one of these apart. So I'm gonna first turn it all off and then see what we can do to maybe I don't know maybe there's some dust and maybe there's some dust in here that I can get rid of. So far, so good. I don't know. Apparently, these keyboards are kind of notorious for being not the greatest. It's a lot of dirt. Inside here. It's just not, not as bad as I thought it might be, but... Anyways, I'm going to try this, let's see if this, let's give it one second here, I'm going to try this, and then if not, we're going to end up uh, taking it apart and seeing what it looks like on the inside. I, I mean, it's not a, an incredibly big deal, but um, I kind of want the keyboard to work, but I can use, I can easily use another keyboard with it, and it's not, not the end of the world, but uh, let's see how this sounds now. So, the thing, this thing does do some really wild sounds. I liked it so far. So let's see. Can't say that's better. That still doesn't work. At least if you touch the bottom, it doesn't work. Not the same as the other ones. So yeah, this one still has a problem. As you can see, it does sound really cool. Anyways, I'm still getting used to how this thing all works. Um, but, uh, okay. Yeah, let's, okay, let's take it apart and see what we can come up with here. All right, so I got it all flipped over, and let's see if we get these screws out on the bottom. Uh, you don't need to take the ones that are out in the very center of the uh, of the unit. You just have to take the ones that are sort of in the very bottom. Uh, actually, there is three in the middle, and then these ones at the back here that I'm working on right now. All right, so once you get all these screws out, you're gonna to wanna to flip it over, and uh, you're gonna to wanna to come up with some kind of way to uh, hang 
the, the I guess the key the, the top part of the keyboard. I'm sure it's probably better off to just actually disconnect the uh, ribbon cables altogether. But what I ended up doing was taking some uh, uh, basically some regular RCA plugs or sorry just the wiring for um, for just the RCA and I hung it uh, basically I hung the the top of the keyboard on my um, on my, the top of my workbench, I have like one of those, I don't know, a place where you can hang your tools and stuff like that. So I just basically kind of wired the uh, the wire through there and then to the top of the keyboard. But anyways, uh, moving on to the keyboard itself, you're gonna want to kind of organize all your screws. Um, I, I basically uh, kept a towel underneath the keyboard, but off to the, the right side, I, I uh, kept the key, uh, sorry, <laughs> the, um, Screws for the keyboard separate from the actual unit itself, just so I can remember where everything goes. And the keys actually slide, like the whites uh, actually just kind of slide down. Um, so they're pretty easy to get out. You just have to kind of remember the order that they come out. Um, and what I ended up doing was I kept the keys in two separate groups so that I knew which ones were from the left side and which ones were from the, uh, the right side. Now, once I got all the keys out, you can see here uh, some of the mounts, um, and then there's a little bit of dirt here and there, like some couple of rust spots for some reason, uh, but definitely some hair everywhere. I found that um, these rubber, I guess the rubber buttons, I was going to take them out, but I ended up not doing that at all, and uh, decided that I'm just going to try first, at first, spraying everything and seeing if, um, you know, that's going to make a difference, if there's any kind of way of cleaning it out um, you know if that's going to make a difference for for the uh, for the keys themselves but it's also a good rule of thumb you know when you get something open like this you should just get some can like, like a can of uh, air and just clean it all out nicely and just get sort of all and dust and hair or, or whatever else has got that managed to find its way in there All right, with all the uh, keys removed, I actually took them all and put them in some soap and water. And while that was soaking, I um, started just testing all the buttons individually to see if there was anything actually faulty uh, beneath them without, uh, you know, without the keys themselves. And, you know, they all seemed to kind of work. I mean, there was a little bit of um, uh, some issues on a couple of the ones that were a, a problem before, but I, I found that after just kind of pushing on them a little bit, they seemed to be fine. So couldn't tell you exactly what was, um, you know, causing them to not work properly, but just by pushing on them, they seemed to be totally fine. And uh, so th since it was all open, I thought I'd just take a moment to show you what the, uh, the where the FPGA um, is so underneath this copper uh, cover. That's basically where the, the main, um, I guess, like CPU is. Um, and as you can see, the rest of it, it's all still intact. I, I only really needed just to take the lid off and gain access to, um, you know, the, the main key panel itself. Again, I mean, basically I'm trying this because, you know, uh, well, for one thing, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but um, I do know how to fix some, you know, just some computers and stuff like that. So I thought it wouldn't be that much of a difference.
All right, with some of the keys all nice and clean, I thought I'd do a little bit of a trial run and see if um, you know I can figure out exactly what's going on with these these keys. You know, having them all out um, kind of gives you a better idea of like what's working and and what's not working properly. But yeah, I basically still had the same kind of issue with those three sa uh, same keys, um, even even with having them like outside of the keyboard itself or not really mounted properly. Anyways, I, I went, I decided to uh, try something and I picked up some of these double-sided uh, pads. I guess they're like furniture or, sorry, actually they're um, uh, picture frame hanging pads. And, uh, you know, I, I picked them up from the dollar store. Um, as you can see, they're pretty much, uh, you know, really hard to <laughs> remove from the package <laughs> as easy as I want to. But yeah, they use a lot of good glue on these packages, I guess. Uh, but for, for this, first I thought maybe I would, uh, you know, put the pads on like every single key. I might still do that, but uh, for this purpose, you know, I'm only going to put it on the, the three keys that are actually giving me some, some issues and see what, it, uh, see what it does. So as you can see here, um, you know, I got these like plaid colored uh, pads, I guess. Um, anyways, like the one side, it's kind of convenient that they've got these like little squares on it. And as, as you can see in the bottom of the key, uh, I should be able to line it up nicely, um, you know, just by cutting uh, off what I, what I need and, you know, peeling off the backing and it should, should sit nicely on, on these things. All right, so I've got my, my pad all nice and cut and I'm just gonna peel the backing off and attach it to that uh, one area that just really touches the, the rubber uh, keypad itself. And it should give you just a little bit of an extra, um, I don't know, a little bit extra push on, on the pads themselves. I, I did actually see this in another video. I wasn't sure if the keys were gonna line up properly, but as you can see, it actually does. Um, what it does is it makes it a little bit more firmer uh, on that one key. So. Just be aware that the travel is going to be a little different when you do this um, as opposed to how it's supposed to be, I guess. But I, in comparison to maybe some other keys, um, I don't know, which I don't really have a lot of keyboards. But yeah, it just seems like uh, these this keyboard wasn't made very, very well. And I guess it hadn't been the biggest complaint from a lot of people. And as you can see, like, you know, a few keys seem to fail. Um, <clears throat> with the, uh, you know, with the pressing on, on those rubber pads. But I didn't see it was worth me actually taking the uh, the rubber padding apart like uh, that was done in some of the other videos or really just the other one that, I, that I've seen. Um, I didn't want to risk, like, ripping anything, so I never bothered to do that myself. But, um, yeah, just basically just testing this out here, you probably can't... Um, here everything exactly the way it's supposed to be but um anyways i was doing this when there was a, a lot of other people sort of in the room anyways so it's kind of hard to do a little bit of both
as you can see here, everything is pretty nice and level. Uh, no change in, in the height of the, any of the keys. I, I was kind of worried that it was going to be um, a little bit off. but And uh, yeah, this is my, uh, my wiring jig that I did to hold up the, uh, the keyboard. And just as I was trying to carefully put it back together, the darn ribbons came out. But now that I've got everything back together, let's see how it works. Well, it seems like it's all working now again properly, but um, just be assured that the keys that you do put the pads on, they're going to be a little stiff. So if you don't mind that, um, yeah, the repair or I guess this kind of a fix up is well worth it. But uh, yeah, just keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to uh, work on your keyboard. Thanks a lot for checking out the video and stay tuned for more.